ഓം വക്രതുണ്ട മഹാകായ സൂര്യകോടി സമപ്രഭ നിർവിഘ്നം കുരു സർവകാര്യേഷു സർവദ സരസ്വതി നമസ്തുഭ്യം ൂപിണി വിദ്യാരംഭം കരഷ്യാമി സിദ്ധ മേ സദാ ഗുരുർബ്രഹ്മാഷ്ണോ ഗുരുർദേവോഷ്ണ ഗുരു സാക്ഷാത്ബ്രഹ്മ തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരവേ നമ ശാന്തി മനേ നമ ഓം ശ്രീ പരമാത്മനെ നമ അത ചതുർത്ഥോധ്യായ അഥ ചതുർത്ഥോധ്യായ ശ്രീ ഭഗവാനുവാച ശ്രീ ഭഗവാനുവാച ശ്ലോക നമ്പർ 21 ശരീരം കേവലം കർമ ശരീരം കേവലം കർമ കുർബന്നോത്തി കിൽബിഷം ശരീരം കർമ്മ കരോതി കേവലം ശരീരം നിയർ ബോഡി അലോൺ ഡസ് കർമ്മ ശരീരം കർമ്മ കരോതി ദഫു കിൽബിഷം കുർവൻ നാപ്നോതി കിൽബിഷം കിൽബിഷം മീൻസ് പാപം കിൽബിഷം മീൻസ് ഇംപ്യൂരിറ്റി but here it is papa punya karma phala the person will not be tainted by karma phala will not be affected by kilbisham why because kevalam shariram eva karma karoti natu atma because the person is is jnani yes discovered yes is one who is nirashihi who is yatha chitta atma nirashihi is the person who doesn't have asha expectations who doesn't have expectation who doesn't have any expected outcome of a particular action it does not for the sake of fulfillment it does either because is supposed to or for loka sangraha the for nirashi that is one nirashi some people trans nirashi as hopeless it's not hopeless that is a man of full of hope hopes utsaha why should be hopeless yatha chitta atma chitta atma is chittam atma is uh, it, it is yataha yataha is restrained master atma is here chitta is mind atma is body the fourth body mind and we can include senses also body mind senses yataha restrained mastered one who has mastery over body mind sense organs it means the person has shama dhamma tichiksha etc all those is not dictated by anatma is not dictated by anatma that is chitta atma it means he has complete complete mastery because he, has, he knows himself therefore mastery over sharir man sangata knowing atma 
is knowing Atma is knowing that which it's not Atma also. So, Shariram is Anatma. So, Atma is known. Everything is Atma. What about Shariram? It is Anatma. In fact, Anatma is Atma. Atma is Anatma. That is, that is everything is Atma. But that's Upadi. That with Kartrita Vimana. Previously, that is before becoming Jnani, before getting Jnanam. Or Anatma is yes, Abhimana. So, therefore, Shariramana Sangata is what makes me but now the state of Sangata is he has an objective look because he knows they are not Atma, they are, they are Atma, but Atma is not me. Agam Atma is Sharira Binaha. Therefore is therefore is he has got the mastery over the body. This is the mastery. Mastery over body, mind and senses. So not dictated by Sharira Mana Sangata, that is a mastery. Here, mastery out of jnana, because we are talking about jnani, because previous shloka also, Tekta Karma Pala Sangam, Nitya Tripta Nirashaya, he says. Therefore, jnani. And Kurvan Napnauti Kilvisham, even though it has karma, it doesn't incur papa. How is it possible? Kilvisham means papa. Taking the meaning of Kilvisham means papa. It is Karmapala. So, for Kilvisham here, it is papa. We are taking uh, Kilvisham meaning papa here. Papa is the Karmapala. Punima is Karmapala. So, not touched by, not apnoti. It doesn't gain papa by doing. It doesn't gain punyam also. Doesn't gain papa. What about punyam? That, that also it doesn't incur. Neither punyam nor papa. No papa, no punya. How can there be papa? How can there be punya? Kurvan api na karoti, naiva kinchit karoti saha, tasya karim na vidyate. Therefore, kurvan api, kilvisham na apnoti, kurvan api na karoti. Therefore, the person who is free of expectation, whose body, mind, senses have been mastered, yataha. Yam Datu Yam Yetaha Chittatma Yena Yetaha Chittatma Yena Saha Whose body mind senses have been mastered. Tekta Sarva Parigraha he has given up all the Parigraha, the possessions. That is Sanyasa. Jnana. Not, me not physically give up. Jnana. I don't possess anything. Atma. As Atma, what, I can, I, what can I possess? Sharira. Shaya Matma doesn't possess. There is no Granthi really. Chit Jada Granthi is only notion. Therefore, Shariram cannot contain Atma. Atma is everywhere. The Shariram, so Shariram Atma manifests. Therefore, Shariram itself is not there. And what about the other possessions? All the other things which are possessed is only through Shariram. Possessions are only through Shariram. Shariram itself is not possessed. And what to talk about the other possessions? Therefore, Tekta Sarva Parigraha Kevalam Shariram Karma Purvan Shariram Kevalam Karma Shariram is here. Shariram Shariraya shari for the sake of the Shariram because Prarabdha is there. Therefore, life continues. Therefore, the, the Jnani has to continue, he has to live. Shariram Kev, the first the body has to sustain, the first for the sustenance of the body. For the maintaining the body, karma karoti, even jnani does karma, but by that he doesn't incur any papam, neither papam nor punyam. So therefore, no karma pala, name karma pala is bha, amam karma ni limpanti, karma pala ni limpanti, that is what it is, yes, said here. So, kilbisham. Na apnoti doesn't incur any punyam, doesn't incur any papam. By doing, it doesn't incur. While describing a wise person, a jnani, Krishna presents different kinds of people in terms of karma. So jnani is present. So in terms of karma, Visada jnani who engages numerous activities, knowing he or she is not doing anything. Karmani avi pravrto api, revit inchit karoti saha, though he engages in varieties of action. Karmani avi pravrto api. 
Yani, he engages intense activities. He initiates many projects, many activities, but he, he doesn't do anything. In this shloka, while describing the jnani, the Krishna introduced a different type of person, jnani, who knows Atma is a karta. As in the previous shloka, here also the first line describes jnana and second line describes the lifestyle of the person. Being a jnani, or he conducts his life. Previous shloka, he said he will take up different activities and he will do. And here it is said it is Shariram Kevalam Karma, only for the sustenance of the body, it is karma. The first line indicates the jnana. Second line, lifestyle of the jnani. So in this shloka, the one who knows the self is said to be Nirashi, he, Asha Nasti. Their Ashi, he, who is free from expectation, Ashi is. Ashi is also means hope. The negative knee doesn't mean the person is hopeless. Huh? That's what some people translate as hopeless. It's not hopeless. Means he is free from expectations, free from hope. Expectations only when will be will be there when Aham, when I am a Purna. So what expectation is there for a Purna Atma? Therefore, it is hopeless. I mean it is expectationless, not hopeless. There's an hope. Anything as 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 fulfilling, fulfilling factor. From any from anything or from or from any action. Therefore, nirashi. This jnani is one from whom all expectations have gone away, dropped away. And how does this happen? The hopeless person has expectations. Expectations that are hopeless for him or her, in, in that there is no way of fulfilling them. See, the hopeless person has expectations. What about the jnani? Jnani is not hopeless. The hopeless person has expectations, expectations that are hopeless for him or her, that there is no way of fulfilling. That is hopeless. Expectation hopeless person has. Because the person has given up all hope of fulfilling his or her expectations, is he or she is desperate. This means the person has not grown out of them. But such a person is a jnani, is frustrated person, and different from the jnani, different from who, who, one whom, from whom all expectations have dropped away because of discovering of the self, to be uh, free from everything. How does one become free from expectation? Irashi, he, Katambhavati. A person lives maturely before gaining knowledge is almost free. That is, before Jnanam, that is Karma Yoga, as Karma Yoga lifestyle. A person is, lives a mature life, then he is almost free. Why almost free? Because Jnanam alone makes him completely free. Because of yoga, he is not under the spell of Ragad Dvesha, likes and dislikes, and therefore already relatively free. He is not dictated by Ragad Dvesha. His actions are not dictated by Ragad Dvesha. Actions are to be done, either have to be done, or either it should be refrained from. Therefore, being a yogi, interested in Mumoksha, therefore Mumukshu, therefore he is not under the spell of Ragad Dvesha. Therefore, he is relatively free. When such a person discovers the self, he or she is totally free. That is why almost free is said before. Now becomes totally free. Now doesn't have to fulfill its desires in order to be full and happy. Because he is totally free. He is totally free. What is, what is the will make him more happy? Already he is happy. An ounce of happiness cannot be added to make him more happy. It is full, is full. So therefore, it doesn't have, since he doesn't have desires to full, fulfill, desire to be fulfilled, to become happy. Therefore, so therefore, therefore, the person is nirashihi. The, the person is described as nirashihi, free from expectation. This freedom is in part due to prior accomplishment in terms of Body mentions complex. Yes. So body mentions complex. It's Etachittatma. The Jnani is also described in the shloka as Etachittatma, when who has mastery over body mind senses. So either it can be taken as this Etachittatma as qualification, what he had before, Jnana, as Karma Yogi. Or it can be taken as the Jnani as mastery over physical body mind senses. 
Before that, it was sadhana. Now it becomes sid sad siddha. It is it's natural. Chitta stands for the mind, memory, knowledge, and all forms of thinking. Atma in this particular is a compound. Samasa meaning body. Body means along with the mind and senses. Mind is already is the chitta, so senses. Atma is body, body with the senses. So it is chitta atma. Mastery mir means the mind, the mind and body senses are with the person. So they obey what he says. They are in their proper places as they are. They are as they are, and the one in whose hands the body, mind, and senses are, the one by whom it is mastered. This is what in Katopanishad is given, said in the form of imagery. Atmanam natiram vidhi, shariram rathame vatu, buddhim to saradhi vidhi, manaf pragrahame vacha, yasta vijnana van bhavati, ten manasa sada, tasyendirani vashani sadashva iva sarate heiti. That is, the sense organs are compared to the horses, it is under the, the control of the, the sarati, the driver. Driver controls it. Doesn't let them loose. So, yet a chitta Before knowledge, a person had this qualification relatively. Relatively, relative mastery. Shami, dami. Now he is as it absolutely. That is why one should have in relative measure to enjoy that which in absolutely, to have that in absolutely. That is why Sadhana Chatrashta Sampati, the person has Sadhana Chatrashta Sampati. In absolute, it's, not, it's using anyone. It cannot be anything else. In fact, there is no absolute because you always subject to improvement. For Jnanam, since that qualification is required, therefore one has to cultivate that relatively. Relative mastery over body, mind, senses. And it becomes natural after Jnanam. So therefore, absolutely. Now, with the knowledge, it is absolutely. Krishna also says here that this particular jnani is Chakta Sarva Parigraha. One who has given up all his or her possessions. Meaning, meaning that the person being described is a typical sannyasi. It's a sannyasi. Ashrama sannyasi. He has given up everything. Ashrama sannyasi. Either the person had already taken to the life of a lifestyle of sannyasi. Before gaining knowledge, or was a grihastha who, having gained knowledge, decided to give up everything. So it can be either of them. That, that is, it could it could be a vividesha sannyasi, or it could be a vidvat sannyasi. Now, after being a grihastha, now he has gained knowledge, therefore decided to give up everything. So vidvat sannyasi, vidvat sannyasa is that taking to sannyasa after jnana. Vividesha sannyasi is. Wanting to gain jnanam, wanting to enjoy this jnanam, therefore it takes up to the life of life, 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 life. sannyasa. Having a variety of possessions can be a problem. This possessions. For example, a person may have a large house and find that it takes too much time and energy and money to maintain it properly. He or she may therefore consider selling the house, investing the money moving into a comfortable apartment. But then there is a problem of what to do with all the furniture and other things collected over a period of time. All of them will definitely not fit in an apartment. Look at this. First you buy a house and then embellish it with a lot of things. Now, because you have a lot of things, you want to want a house. Solve confusion. Why don't you sell the things when you sell the house? No, 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 no you may say. There are valuable pieces. This means you are attached to the pieces. And to hang on to them, you require a house. This is a very typical problem. The wise person discussed in this show card doesn't have the problem of attachment or possessions. He or she has given up all possessions. Chakta Sarva Parigraha. Chakta Sarva Parigraha means he has nothing, no house, no furniture, no job. So just one uh, a rag, one is rag hanging from the 
the waste and living under the tree a viksha patra or i am sorry viksha patra the person is a sanyasi who can walk out any time from any place a holy hobo not an ordinary person at all he or she has nothing else to do except to sustain the body kevalam shariram karma karoti such a person eats bathes and does whatever is necessary to maintain a reasonable degree of health in the body the sharir abhimana identification with the body the orientation of agyani towards the body is important is important to note here whatever the person the person has to do to maintain a fairly health condition he or she does this is quite a different orientation from that which over emphasizes the body and uses yoga to give the body a certain form or an inordinate amount of energy so that's why this is two are different wanting to maintain health therefore doing yoga is different but doing yoga and which uh, or emphasizing the body that is that is different that person who becomes a bogi this is focusing only on the body and its health and therefore it become an obsession the yoga can become an obsession it must be kept in mind even that even a healthy body dies one day also an apparently unhealthy body has been known been known to drag on until it is 92 either way healthy or unhealthy the body will suddenly drop pop off this is something we see happening in the world all around therefore maintaining one's health should not become an anchor or the main focus of attention in terms of maintaining the body alone the health is something to be kept in view nothing more if one's attention is on the body and what he eats or doesn't eat for example then it will not be an atma then we cannot say that he is is tekta sarva parigraha sari abhimanam is there so if one's attention is the body then it will not be an atma over emphasizing on such thing is just a waste of waste of time but for the gyani there is no identification with the body sari abhimana such an orientation is not there ashankar acharya makes it very clear in his commentary the man doesn't want the body to be like this or that he or she maintains certain degree of sense of proportion for the diet exercise and lifestyle the body pops off sooner or later what does it matter if you have not gained the knowledge in 40 years and the body goes you can come back perhaps with a better one you either have the knowledge or you don't to think you are something to complete before the body goes is silly there is no question of completion here you are already complete and need only understand this fact in fact if the body goes before this understanding takes place then you simply pick up the thread and continue therefore why should you care unnecessarily about this physical body this particular body this should be the attitude and what happens to the gyani when being free of expectation and having relinquished all possessions he or she performs only those actions that maintain the physical body because shariya abhimana is not there he is doing karma only to protect his body so what will happen this because it is an action will it not bring papa punya no the person gains no papa punya in other words he doesn't gain any karma phala so karma phala implies kartrutva he has no karma phala therefore kartrutva bhavah kartrutva bhavah meaning atma so therefore the person doesn't gain any punya papa now kilbisha meaning papa karma which is done which is not proper which uh, which brings up papa what about punya niyam also is a karma which which also which all brings up which which which, which by the person is yes, as as uh, bondage as bindful as binding as papa punya is as binding as papa from the standpoint of moksha punya is also a cause of bondage only samsara as papa is a cause so to punya also as papa takes a person to adha loka punya takes a person to abha loka adha loka abha loka adha loka the lokas down below so punya takes a person to the abha lokas that's a loka shift due to papa punya that is samsara going here and there traveling whether a shackle is made of iron or gold it is still a shackle 
so vivekananda says this this the chain when you are tied by a chain whether it is iron or gold chain is a chain chain is a chain you are not free you are bound a prince who has committed a felony may be found with a golden shackle and ordinary person with an iron shackle while the material the, while the material the shackle is made is made of can be different but there is no difference whatsoever in terms of being bound neither can remove their hands from the shackle that binds them if the penalty for the felony is death then both will be executed one with the iron chain and other with the golden chain here again the prince may be executed with the golden sword and the ordinary person with the steel sword what satisfaction is there to the prince anyway the life is life will be life will be going so therefore you will be as dead as the ordinary person similarly with reference to karma punya is a golden shackle but as long as punya is helpful in gaining what i want i want punya the punya is required before but not after punya is required for arriving at this knowledge for getting a conducive situation to get this knowledge punya is required but after that after gyanam after after gyanam it is the punya is as good as a binding factor as papa only therefore papa punya doesn't attach to the person shariyam kevalam karma kurvan kilbisham na apnoti doesn't incur papam iti but as long as punya is helpful in gaining what i want i want punya fine if i want punya to take me to this knowledge to give me the circumstances that are conducive for gaining this knowledge then till until i gain this knowledge punya will be helpful getting a teacher getting exposed to the teaching a conducive place at ambience vasling shastram punya is helpful afterwards i no longer want punya because from the ultimate standpoint punya and papa are considered bondage alone once the knowledge has been gained the person no longer gains punya papa because there is no doership all that can be achieved by karma is achieved by that person sista karma krutu knowing that he or she is not the doer is what makes person a wise wise person a krista karma krutu was the new thing that is to be done all that karma can achieve its karma phala nothing else and this karma phala is for one's own sake only not for the sake of karma or for the sake of result nor is karma phala for the sake of the desire it is for the one who has a desire for the karma phala and if all the karma phalas are for my sake you do not add something to me this conclusion is valid only if such condition is possible and it is only possible if i am adequate if i am inadequate if i am atma if atma is inadequate then i definitely require some addition so that i can feel better and so on but is atma inadequate if atma is inadequate it will remain inadequate and you continue to fulfill it continue to remain inadequate so no amount you know no no amount of the fulfillment fulfillment can can really fulfill the inadequate atma the atma is adequate if atma is adequate again no amount of fulfillment can make the full 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 fulfilled atma atma which is ever full fulfill atma full so therefore therefore the conclusion the karma phala adding to adding to my comfort punya punya karma phala adding to my comfort and papa for causing trouble is not there for a jnani therefore he does karma only for the maintenance of the shariram by which he doesn't incur any papa because he knows aham atma iti aham atma it is purna adequate for purna atma doesn't do karma atma is can never be a purna that which is a purna is anatma that one considers oneself to be a apurna because of abhimana of shariram mana sangata so therefore apurna san apurna matva karma karoti whereas jnani is purna therefore kurvanapi ki bisham na apnoti it doesn't incur any papa punya then the next is topic i think you will read next class nothing is to be done to enhance one's happiness oh it is only two paragraph i think we'll complete that on the other hand if the self is already full purna atma and everything is atma alone then there is nothing other than atma 
Where then is the question of my doing anything that is going to enhance my security and happiness? Because Atma is secure. The meaning of the very meaning of security. The security resolves in Atma. The very meaning of security is Atma, happiness is Atma. Therefore, the person who knows Atma to be this fullness is become Sarva Karma Krita, Krishna Karma Krita, otherwise. In one stroke, as we have seen before, Sabadiman Manushyeshu. Krishna Karma Krita. Such a person does nothing, even though she performs. Guru Napi Na Karoti. Karmani Bi Pravarto Api Na Kinchit Karoti. Therefore, here, Kurvan Api Na Kilbisham Na Apnoti. And Kurvan Shari Ram Kevalam Karma for sustenance of the body. Because the body has sustained, sustained. Prada the Karat, Prada the Karma is there. Therefore, Na Kilbisham Apnoti. Otherwise, what, for what he does, Karma Pala will be there and that will perpetuate Samsara. Then, therefore, Na Apnoti. Kilbisham Na Apnoti. Another possible meaning, yes, Shankaracharya raises a doubt regarding the possibility of an alternate meaning for the expression Shari Ram Kevalan Karma. Action performed only for sustaining the body. It should be noted here, Sanyasi alone has been discussed here. Because Sarva Tyaga is talked about. Chakta Sarva Parigraha. All the, the possessions are given up. One who has given up all the possessions. Anything that is done with the body, any physical action is called Shari Ram Karma. If we take this to be the meaning here, then the expression Shari Ram Kevalam Karma, it will mean the karma that is done physically. Because the word Kevala is the Shari Ram Kevalam Karma. Kevalam meaning only. So Shari Ram is action related to Shari Ram, physical action. Thus, the only karma that will not attract Punya Papa will be that which is done with the physical body. If it indeed is the meaning, then what will about the karma done with the mind or the words Vachika Karma and uh, Manasa Karma? If this is the indeed the meaning, then whatever is done by the word Vachika Karma and by the mind Manasa Karma, that will attract these results. If we take that meaning, then what will happen? Shariyam Karma that will not bring Punya Papa. What? Mind and the words Karma done through the mind and the words, that will bring Punya Papa. That meaning will arise. So the Shastram talks about physical, verbal and mental karmas. Therefore, this interpretation cannot work. On, and on these grounds, Shankaracharya dismisses it. Because Shastram talks about karma at various levels. Kaika, Manasa, Vachika. Therefore, to understand this shoka correctly, one must understand the spirit of sannyasa and our sannyasa, sannyasi lives is or is or our life. A person who lives according to this lifestyle only which is necessary to maintain the physical body without any identification with it. Therefore, the sannyasi doesn't grow is or her own food or work to earn money or buy it. Instead, he lives on arms, bhiksha. Which is not the same as begging. To live on Biksha means a person eats whatsoever comes along with without any planning or scheming of about how to acquire the food. Whatever chance brings is food enough for sannyasi. An attitude described by Krishna in the next shloka. So we will read the next class. Stop here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnamada Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurupyo Naha Sanyavadaha Sanyavadaha